On my wedding day, the most unpredictable, peculiar thing happened. No, I'm not talking about the fact that my beautiful wife decided to actually marry a squawny, <coughs> average guy like myself, in which I'm quite lucky for if I may ask. <laughs> but as we stood there at the altar, giving sacred vows to one another, a major link to complete the ceremony went missing. When it came time for the exchange of rings, my wife's maid of honor had an uncomfortable, nervous look on her face. <laughs> she leaned over to my wife and spoke four dreaded words. I left the ring. It <laughs> what became an awkward moment. My anxiety increased, wondering how we were going to continue. After getting this far in the ceremony, we were hit with an unexpected stopping point that was simply out of our hands. I think many of you can relate to my situation here. As young preachers dedicated to doing the work of God, many of us have been and are probably right now in that place where we feel like we're standing before a huge opportunity finally getting ready to capture it. But something happens that abruptly stops <coughs> the process. We know that God has set a special call on our lives to serve the world and make a positive change. We prepared ourselves by going to seminary, creating lifelong friendships with other future world leaders, attending various conferences, <laughs> filling up our email and phone contacts with the heavy, hit, heavy hitters of our respective denominational conventions, and ultimately giving up ourselves to and for Christ. We're taking in every piece of advice that is given to us from those whose footsteps we hope to track. We're conquering despite the criticism and succeeding despite the sour sentiments of those who may have told us this ministry thing just, is just a big waste of time. We're trusting in the Lord with all of our might, studying to show ourselves approved, walking through the valleys of the shadows of death that are Greek vocab exams on Thursdays and, and church council meetings on Saturdays. And we're waiting patiently upon the Lord to renew our strengths and give us our wings to mount up in the sky to fly to whatever task he has for us. But what happens when the task we finally get to fly to is one that leaves us at the altar in wonder and confusion. Mm. Because the very thing we know we need and are charged to and called to do is met by an unexpected <laughs> stopping point that is totally out of our hands. The peculiar thing about being so faithful and dedicated to Christ in the church is that it can create bipolar emotions. Mm. Because if we be honest with ourselves, being in ministry can be both a joy and a burden. Right. Right. All of us would love to take the joys over the burdens each and every time. Mm -hmm. But it just doesn't work that way. Ministry can be a burden when the passion and fiery anger you have within to speak up about the social ills and injustices in our current climate is preferred to be kept to yourself by the person whose leadership you're under. Mm -hmm. Ministry can be a burden when we start to feel like we're placing the demands of the deacons over the direction of the divine. Yeah. Ministry can be a burden when after countless prayers we made to God to heal a sick loved one, we still find ourselves in the hospital lamenting with them instead of at home laughing with them. It can be a burden when we feel pressured to put so much focus on the work of our ministry that we start to lack in our work, our marriage. It can be a burden when we're giving so much to others that we have nothing left to give to ourselves. It can be a burden when our efforts to get the people to become more like Jesus clashes with the people's effort to become more like they want Jesus to be. Mm -hmm. Ministry is a burden when all of our hopes and expectations of what we thought it would be is met with the reality of being everything we hoped and expected it not to. Ministry is a burden. And the only thing a 70-hour work week at the church produces is a small paycheck, an upset spouse, and a disappointed child. Well, well, yeah. And yes, ministry is a burden. 
when we are this close to finally completing a special task, but we're left perplexed because the process suddenly stops right in front of us oh, and is out of our hands. Yeah. In this story, the disciples too find themselves in a burdensome ministry moment. The despicable death of John the Baptist is still fresh on their minds. Many of them can't help but cringe <coughs> at, the, at the thought and the flashbacks of seeing his lifeless, headless body being placed in the tomb. They were shook up pretty bad and in great need of pastoral care from Henry Nowen and Elizabeth Cooper Ross. <laughs> Jesus, seeing the demise they were in, told them to take some time off to themselves and rest. They felt so depressed, they didn't even have an appetite. After such an emotional week, they were beyond relieved and happy that Jesus gave them this day off. James turned to his brother John as they, as they were preparing their sleeping space on the boat and said, bro, this is awesome. <laughs> this is exactly what I needed. It's been a long few days. This, this ministry man can really weigh you down. John was too tired to verbally respond and just nodded his head in agreement. <laughs> as soon as they had everything in order and were seconds away from what was going to feel like the best nap ever, they heard a distant yet loud voice. They, along with the other disciples who were on their way to dreamland, popped up to see that a few people were far off recognized who they were and were shouting to others to go get everyone because Jesus was nearby. Darn, 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 Peter screamed while banging on the side of the boat. Right when I thought we could get some good shut eye, here we go again. All of them knew that the rest they thought they were about to get was not going to happen because a crowd was being formed. And Jesus never turned down the crowd. They stood up, wiped the tiredness and crackers from their eyes, and bent down over the boat to wash their face with water. By the time they got to shore, what were just a few dozen people a moment ago turned into thousands. They got out and sat near Jesus and heard him teach the people for hours. Like some of our college professors, Jesus must have really been into his lecture plan because it's late, but he's still teaching. <laughs> <laughs> A couple of disciples went over tapping Jesus on the shoulder to let him know of the late hour and suggested that he let the people go so that they can go get dinner. While they were genuinely concerned about the people's hunger, I'm sure in the back of their minds they were also thinking about this, thinking that the sooner the crowd left, the sooner they can return to their rest. Jesus paused, turned to them, and gave them the most unusual answer. He said, you give them something to eat. All of their jaws dropped at once. Thomas, with his often slick attitude, said, um, excuse me? <laughs> <laughs> you want to run that by us again? <laughs> Jesus gives him a stern look. You know that look says, <clears throat> says you better check yourself? Yes, They're hesitant to leave because they're waiting on Jesus to say, just joking, LOL, come on, let's roll out. <laughs> but he does. He's as serious as he can be. The disciples don't get it. Jesus knows they've been dealing with the death of John the Baptist. He knows they're physically and emotionally drained. He, he knows they need a break, yet he is asking them to give a free dinner to a crowd. <coughs> One of them asks, are we supposed to spend the little money we have to buy all of them food to eat? Jesus, you know we broke. <laughs> We're unemployed. Remember, we left our jobs to follow you. <laughs> Apparently, it was the disciples that started the trend of broke ministers. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus told them to go get whatever they could find with their limited resources. They can only pull together five loaves of bread and two fish. All right. I can imagine them walking back to Jesus feeling like failures. They wanted to bring more, but it was all they had. 
They wanted to be good young servants, good young ministers, by completing the task they were charged with. But it was all they had. They were at an unfortunate standstill. Have you ever felt like this? As much power and energy you exhausted in the plan that you lock in, put together a community service event, lead a small group Bible study, graduate on time, <laughs> write a church history of them or paper, or aid in building up enough money to execute a new ministry idea. By the time all of your hard work was finished, it felt like it just wasn't enough. And you thought to yourself, this is all I have. It's out of my hands. In the midst of already grieving the death of a friend and feeling restless, another burden falls upon the disciples. <coughs> they feel inadequate to do their job their Lord has asked of them, and they're at a stopping point in which they can't continue. Like I felt during my wedding ceremony, they know they have an important task to do and to complete, but they're left standing clueless <coughs> because they don't have what it takes to finish it. But then something happens. All of a sudden, the five loaves and two fish they looked down on, the five loaves and two fish they felt in inadequate because of, the five loaves and two fish they felt was just not enough, the five loaves and two fish that hindered them from getting the job done. All right. The five loaves and two fish that added on another burden from, for them was taken from their hands yeah. Yeah. and placed yeah. into Jesus' hands. Yeah. All right. And Jesus was able to do something with it that only Jesus could do. Yes, sir. He was able to do something with it that no baker, yeah. no cook, yeah. uh -huh. no chef, yeah. no restaurant could yeah. do. He took what they had, lifted it up to heaven, blessed it, uh, broke it, and gave it back to them to do what needed to be done. Come on now. What were just five loaves and two fish in their hands yeah. turned into a full course meal that fed thousands in Jesus' hands. Yes, sir. What they viewed as a barrier, a blockade, a burden in their hands mm -hmm. turned into a blessing in Jesus' hands. Sheila Welsh writes that in God's hands, even the things that have broken us can be used by him to make us whole. Wow. Wow. Yes, it is important to recognize, even if we do have shortcomings, failures, <coughs> inadequacies, or standstills in our ministry, if we put them in God's hands, God will somehow find a way to transform them into something incredible and make good use of it. The burdens we encounter and ministry that have the potential to break us, break our families, break our churches, and break our lives are the same burdens that if we place in the hands of God have the potential to bless us, bless our families, bless our churches, and bless our lives. <coughs> Standing at the altar, in that moment, I figured we might as well move on pretending like my wife was placing a fake ring on my finger <laughs> as she recited the ring pledge. But then out of nowhere, I saw a lone arm come from behind me, mm. reaching between us, placing something in my wife's hand. The next thing I knew, my wife was putting a ring on my finger, repeating after the minister. As the arm slowly withdrew away, I peeked behind to see who it belonged to. It was my wife's dad. <laughs> my soon-to-be father-in-law, uh -huh. who was sitting right behind us on the front row. Yeah. He took off his own wedding ring, mm -hmm. placed it in my wife's hand to put it around my finger in order for the ceremony to continue mm -hmm. and be completed. Oh, wow. My friends, I just want to leave you with this encouragement and knowing that whenever tasks and opportunities seem to be met with unexpected opposition, yeah. whenever we feel like we, what we have just isn't enough to give, Whenever ministry and service lay burdens on our front doorstep, uh -huh. whenever we're at the point where we're this close to getting the job done, but we can't continue because we're missing something and it's out of our hands, yeah. we have a Heavenly Father yes, who will reach yeah. 
from behind us out of nowhere yeah. and give us just what we need. Now get this. The ring that my father-in-law gave me, which replaced the original ring I had to complete the task, didn't even fit. His ring was too big to fit around my finger. There was so much room left over and around my finger. My friends, don't be weary and worried about what you may be lacking to fulfill your duty. Because if you just wait on God, Yes, to place it in your hands, you have more to work with than you ever intended. Yeah. Because God can turn our little into large. Yeah. God can turn our minor into major. Yes, God can turn our small into sufficient. Yes, God can turn our pain into peace. Yes, God can turn our chaos into calm. Yes, God can turn our nothing into something. Yes, God can turn our burdens into blessings. Yes, God can turn our trouble into triumph. Yes, God can turn our tears of torment into our tears of thankfulness. Yeah. And that which we seem to be missing to carry out our mission and our charge, God will give it to us in order to do whatever it is he has called us yeah. to do. And we can press on being assured of the words of that old hymn, God me, old thou, great yes, Jehovah, pilgrim through this barren land. I am weak, Lord, but thou art mighty. Hold me with thy power on hand. Bread of heaven, bread of heaven, feed me. Till I want no more. Yeah.